Now this morning I have a little little message. I call it enter into power. Yeah, we want to enter into power. You know, God hates a powerless church. You know, he doesn't like a church with no power, but we have to enter into their power. Now, I read to you Matthew 13, 45 and 46. Jesus said here, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. That's quite a statement, isn't it? That's the kingdom of heaven is like unto, you know, it's a comparison. So what does he say? A merchant man, one that buys and sells, you know, he's... Um, in the business of uh, buying pearls and selling pearls. But when he had found one pearl of great price, he sold everything and bought it. That's absolutely amazing. You see, there are many ways we can look at this parable. Many ways we can look at it. You know, <laughs> today, <coughs> I want to look at it in two ways. Often you get only one way. Sell all you've got. You have to repent. You have to quit everything you have. Sure. Absolutely. Sell all you have. But the other part is you will get that perfect pearl. You know, we sometimes think, oh, we have to give up. We have this. No, what you get is the perfect pearl. The pearl of great price. And that pearl of great price is the person of Jesus Christ, Amen. the Word. You know, you, you receive that. So when you give up every other pearl or whatever you thought had value and give that, you really get power and you get the Word itself. His Word is perfect. His Word is truth. His Word is power. His word is eternal. Just receive freely what God has for you. Just receive it freely. You know, you know how a pearl, you know, uh, they, they come from uh, oysters and stuff. You know, they, they produce pearls. It's probably a long, agonizing process. But you don't have to do anything for it. Just get rid of what you have and receive that complete, perfect pearl you don't have to work on it you don't have to do anything just receive it but it may may cost you something you have to lay down <laughs> other things to get that you know in in um, Isaiah 55 1 to 3 it says ho everyone that's thirsteth come ye to the waters and he that has no money Come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me here, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Amen. Buy without money. <laughs> you know, this pearl, you don't have to buy it. You don't have to manufacture it. You just have to receive it. But you cannot receive it if you hang on to everything else because it, it, it has no room then. But you have to, for a start, recognize the value of it. You know, in, in life, I mean, I experienced it myself. I've done all sorts of things in my life. When I was young, I wanted to do something extraordinary or more than all the others, you know. And 
you know, it starts with little things, you know, you get a little motorbike and you want to jump higher than the other one with it and all these things, you want to excel and, and get more and more and more and then, oh, everybody goes to work, now I want to travel, well, what is this? And, you know, you do all these different things and then at the end you realize it satisfies not. For a while it does, it seems to, but it's not what satisfies. It is only when Christ comes into our life. That's the only thing that really satisfies. <clears throat> but you know, until you see that, you try, you try, you try. And for a while you think it's, it's great. But as time goes on, you think it's all a waste of time. What does it do? has no lasting value it doesn't bring anything you know <coughs> I have spoken and heard some people talking and oh, overseas you know what's your hobby you know okay some say oh, photography you know another one oh watching videos it's his hobby you know I mean you can sit there and watch videos day and night and entertain yourself but at the end, there's nothing. There's nothing to it. You know, you fill your head with some nonsense and entertainment. You just live your life away and achieve nothing. People do that. Not just in, in that way, but in, in many ways. Doing things and then realizing it doesn't bring anything. You know, you can buy pearls. Oh, that's a good pearl. And, they all like pearls to that person, but we talk about the pearl of great price. In order to receive the word, we only need to get rid of all the lies you may have learned, you may feel, you may think. He, Jesus, is the truth, the life, and the way. So when I talk about lies, his word is the truth. He is the truth. And whatever is contrary, whatever we think or we feel different to what his word says, is a lie. We, we don't see it that way. No, no, it's not a lie. That's, that's real. Well, the eternal things are more real than the things which we presently see. There is another dimension which is more real than this one. And this other dimension are angels. There's spirits, there's demons, there's all sorts of things. It's more real than this dimension. It's not how we feel or what we may have learned. You know, sell all you've got and do not hang on to any of your own pearls. Pearls of understanding, pearls of religion, pearls of interpretations. You know, the hardest thing is to convert a religious person to Christ. You take a Catholic, brought up Catholic, it's very hard to get the Catholicism out of them. You get a Baptist, you get a any church denomination, anything people believe, it's very hard to convert them out of that to Christ. Because they all think they have Christ, that they learn a certain way and hang on to their, well, in the Old Testament, oh, Jesus called them their traditions, but it becomes like a tradition. We believe this, we believe that. I've met people, they say, let's write the creed. We believe this, we believe that, and, and write the creed. And then you sign up to it, whether in paper or in mind, and then how can you get somebody out of that? Lay down those man-made pearls and get the pearl of great price. Amen. You know, the pearl of great price is power. It's joy. It's yeah. peace unspeakable. Amen. And if you haven't got it, then you need to get rid of some pearls and find that pearl of great price. Amen. You know, without the pearl of great price, you cannot believe and receive what he has in his word for you. That's the point. You you may say, oh, I believe it, but you can't actually <laughs> do anything because you haven't got it. If we have it, we don't just say we believe it, we receive it and we actually experience it. 
You know, I don't want to just have a theory of, of, of a religion or a faith. Somebody else may have had a big fire or revival. I want it in my own life. And if I don't see it, then I don't question. I don't, I, I only question myself. Have I got them? Yeah. Well, if it says joy, peace, when it says all these things and it's not there, you have to find out why. Yeah. Remember, when we were first married, we had the first child, and she was just a few, three weeks old. We moved into a flat, and in their flat was a funny atmosphere. Well, a funny atmosphere happened to be an evil spirit. We didn't know. We moved in there, you know. And uh, and one night, the devil tried to kill our little girl. You are believer, three, three months, weeks old, sorry, three weeks old. She was like corkscrew coming up on the side of the bed like that. It was horrible. We took her to the middle of the night to a doctor and... They checked her out and said she was very disturbed, but there's nothing wrong with her. And, you know, that happened over and over. And we had fusses, you know, together and, and all these things. And one night I woke up, one in the morning, and I heard my wife crying in the lounge. She was there on her knees, the Bible open, a box of handkerchiefs, and I had to go to work the next day, and that was going on for a while. So I went there and said, come to bed. Come on. Had enough of this, you know. Come to bed. She said, no. Nope. I'm not coming. I want to know what's happening. Here the Bible says, love, joy, peace. Peace that pass all understanding. I can't see it. I want to know why. You see, that is... A good starting point to actually go to get what is rightfully yours and I knew she was in for the long haul <laughs> so I said do you want me to pray with you she said oh yes so I dropped on my knees because I was tired not because I was pious but I was tired and I mumbled a prayer I can't even remember what I said and just about dropped off to sleep and then she started to pray and i tell you what it wasn't speaking in tongues it was but the most spiritual beautiful prayer praising god for the victory and just totally different to what she was feeling quoting the word and you know i started to wake up and think that presence of God came down we screamed we shouted we praised God and then eventually we went back in the bedroom we couldn't sleep I was so excited we were three in the morning shouting and screaming praising God and the blood of Jesus Christ that cleansed us from all sin and then with a big bang and the scratch on the window a thump and something went out the room and there was the devil we lived upstairs the window was pushed from the inside out with a scratch and the thump, the thing went. And I'll tell you what, it was a different place, that place. But it's real. So if it's not there, let's see God. Let's not hang on to pearls which give you pleasure for a little while. Let's have the pearl of great price. And what we have with it, you see, when you have, when you have that pearl, you have everything he is he gives you you know it's it's so wonderful so we cannot receive what he has for us if we haven't got that pill it is not what you think nor how you feel it is what he says that is what counts again I say get rid of or sell what others may have told you <laughs> if it's not the word that's yeah you know it's uh, I've heard so many things over the years and you know every church you go to they seem to think they have the pearl 
they're it. And then you have to agree with them. If you don't agree with them, they don't love you anymore. <laughs> you know, it's quite interesting. Um, Jesus said, now I'll read you this one, in Acts 26, and I'll, I'll read this, and I read it before many times because it was my experience. I'm saying believe the word despite how you feel or how you see it or what you've learned. Believe his word. Acts 26, from, I read this from verse 15 to 18 in the Amplified Version. And I said, who are you, Lord? That's Paul, but he had an encounter with the Lord. And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you to serve as a minister and as a witness, to testify with authority, not only to the things which you have seen, but also to the things in which I will appear to you, choosing you for myself and rescuing you from the Jewish people and from the Gentiles, to whom I am sending you. Now here it comes, what for? To open their spiritual eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness and release from their sins and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified, set apart, made holy by faith in me. Amen. You know, I was 27 years old, a sinner, a chief sinner, I call it this way, done everything wrong that can be done wrong. And here I was reading this scripture with an evangelist. And he challenged me. He said, do you understand what this scripture means? And I said, yes, here. They received forgiveness and the release from their sins and were made holy because they believed in Jesus. And he said, yes. He said, what about you? Do you believe in Jesus? And I thought, sure I do. I tried to sort out my life. I tried to live right. I tried to, well, I, I quit smoking. I tried to drink less. I tried to do all these things because I believe in Jesus. And then he says, what does it mean to you then? And here I was standing. After Try not to see myself there when I was cry, I can't talk. But I was standing there, and here it says, Then you set apart and made holy. I can't say I'm a saint because I saw all my life, all the things I've done, like a film right in front of me. Every evil thing, or many of them, just there, there, there. And the devil say. You're not a saint. You're just a hypocrite, you know. Even think that way. But then I said, that's the word. That's what God says. And everything else is a lie. So I had to deny myself. I said, then I'm holy. And the preacher looked at me. And he said, have you said thank you to him ever? I said, no. We went on our knees and thanked the Lord having made me holy by faith Amen. in Jesus Christ. Amen. And then when I drove home, after about 10 minutes, it just came down from heaven. I screamed, I cried, I lost my voice, and I've never been the same since. Because I was able to receive the power of the word by believing the word, despite the way I learned, I felt, I've done, had nothing to do with it. Yeah, you see, 
that is the point I'm saying. If you can receive the word, you receive power. You receive deliverance. You receive all these things. Forget about how you, how you were. You know, just this morning I was listening to the Bible. Here was two spies went to Jericho before they destroyed, thought destroyed Jericho, you know. And here was a harlot, Rahab, took in the spies, hid them, delivered them, saved them there. Well, well, she was a harlot. But God did not condemn her for being a harlot. He approved her for minding the things of God. You see, that's the difference. You know, we sometimes concentrate on the, on the vessel or what they do or how they lived and whatever. No, it's what you do with his word. That's really what it comes to. And she received those two spies. She hid them when the, the, the people tried to kill them and find them and uh, let, let them go later. She even sent the, the soldiers out. Said, oh, they just went over there, you know. And uh, But... God looked after her. She was spared. The whole town was wasted and killed off, except her and those in her house. You see, God is no respecter of persons. Man may be, but God isn't. So that is so important that we can receive what he says. Isaiah 55, 6-9 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. His thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. Amen. And to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? We trust the Almighty God, and not our own thoughts, feelings, our own knowledge we we have to lay these things aside if you want power and you want the pearl of great price you have to sell off or denounce those things and just believe what he says that's what it comes to you know even the disciples tell you who walked and talked with jesus and have seen the miracles they had no understanding they walked with him. They heard him preach. But they had no understanding. Once their eyes were opened. And they understood. Then there was no more hesitation. To lay down and sell all their pearls of understanding. And they did buy with no money. Just by believing and receiving the pearl of great price. Yeah. They believed and received his word with no hesitation. And you know, you go to places and people give you interpretations and ways of the word. And now you have to see this. You won't make it if you don't see that. And all these things. Let Jesus open your eyes. Amen. Let him do it. I'll, I'll read you just uh, this situation with the disciples in Luke 24. I read from 45 to 49. It says, Then opened he their understanding, that was Jesus, that they might understand the scriptures. They didn't understand them. They learned them, they heard them, but they didn't understand them. It takes Christ to reveal it to you. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance 
and remission of sins shall be preached in the name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I sent to the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Amen. Oh, I, I, I love that. That's what he told them after he opened their eyes. Now, because their eyes were now open, they could receive God's word. They could receive it. They said they believed it before. They didn't understand it. But now they could receive it so they could receive the power and the promise. You see, they all had received and believed the word of Jesus Christ told them. They acted upon the word, waiting for the power from on high. They acted upon it. They believed and waited. Did you know that? He told them in Acts uh, 2, 1 to 4, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Wow. Not because he said, well, we all agree on this and the other. No, they all heard what Jesus said. And they all believed what Jesus said. So they were with one accord in one place, the place he told them to go. You see, there was not a, a split up or anything. No, with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Amen. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. You see, that's when they've got Christ, the Holy Ghost. You see, following what He said. But they couldn't even follow Jesus because they didn't understand until He opened their eyes. And if your eyes are open to the truth, say, praise God. And then you can actually follow you see, may the Lord Jesus Christ open our eyes so that we can all receive what he has for us today. See, so you may say, well, I've heard the truth. I know the truth. I'm walking in the truth. Are you walking in power? That's my question. If you don't walk in power, don't give me your truth because you haven't got it. We walk in power or we don't walk in power. Otherwise, we just have a religious uh, confession, some better than others. You know, that there's a whole, whole groups that they always talk about. You know, all right, they talk about Jesus, what he did 2,000 years ago, and nothing else. What about today? He's not the big God. He's the living Christ. And, you know, I take your religion any day if you walk in power. If you walk in power, then I know you've got something I haven't got, maybe. And I want it. Then I say, Lord, open my eyes so I can see and receive the same thing. Amen. But if I don't see that, I don't want it. You know, when he opens our eyes, then the power will come and we will see the Holy Ghost move. Then we will truly glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, what do we glorify? What are we talking about in our daily walk? No longer will we give glory to our own pearls of understanding, but we will be sold out to Christ and Him alone. And you know, when you have the pearl of great price, you don't even worry about the pearls you once had. He sold them all. Here, that's look at this pearl of great price. Look what I've got. You know, 
it, it's, it's really, that's all you talk about. But when you have that pearl, you have everything that goes with it. You have the power. You have the power. You know, as for me, I, I say that as, a, as a, the way I, I always feel. I speak the same as Paul spoke in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 2. Paul said, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. Praise God. You know, when you, when you actually have a, a, an encounter with him, not just heard about him, but if you actually meet him and if he comes into your heart and then you, he does things for you, you, you have that power, you have the joy, you know, nothing can ever separate you from the love of God. It's a wonderful thing. In him is life. In him is hope. And he promised to come again. And I believe that. And you know, you can get all sorts of pearls of interpretations of how that happens and has already happened or whatever. But the pearl of great price, you know, if you have him in you, he will reveal to you what, what is and what is not. I'll just read you John 17. 24 Jesus speaking he is praying and he says Father I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am Amen. praise the Lord Amen. he pray, He wants you to be with him where Amen. he is Amen. he wants you to be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus he wants you to walk in power. Amen. He wants you to have what he has, see what he sees, and be what he is. He says, in, uh, read it again, Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Praise the Lord before the foundation of the world. And you know when Christ loved you while you were yet in your sins. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? While we were yet sinless, he died for us. Hey. I find it so wonderful. First Corinthians, I'm just about finishing now. Chapter 15. I read from 51 to 53. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. That's the promise. That's the mystery. And how do we get changed? How does... Yeah, you know, there's so many, so many people have interpretations. You need to have... Um, you know, be in our church or keep the Sabbath and then you will go or you this or the, you the other or or some don't even believe in this. Others say you need to have rapturing faith. Now you have to believe this and you have to believe this one and you, you follow what I say otherwise you won't make it. That's absolute lie. An absolute lie. If you have the Holy Ghost you have the quickening power in you. And that quickening power will quicken this mortal body to be raised from the dead and changed. You see, all these man-made pearls and nonsense, I sick of that. There's no power that goes with it. You know, you don't see it. You, a lot of entertainment, a lot of jumping around, a lot of uh, good speaking and, and uh, I don't know what not, but no power. You see, I, I like to see 
the power of Christ in a person. The humility of God. You know, power is not just the signs and wonders. It's also the humility that goes with it. Christ was humble. All, all the things. Now, I want to finish with another scripture here. First Thessalonians 5, I'll read from verse 18 to 23. And that is to the believer. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Everything, give thanks. You know, there's a scripture that says, do no covet. <laughs> because we say, well, I haven't got what they have, and I, I have to work, and I have this. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Be content. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesyings. See, that's some people say, oh, we don't need that. Despise not prophesyings. Prove all things. If you convince your church is right, you think, no, no, we don't need to check that one out. That's that's how humans go. You go you you go to a Baptist church, you don't have to check out Baptist doctrine. We know it's right. Prove all things. No matter where you are, prove all things things i like to prove all things and if i find something's proven wrong i i don't want to promote it any longer i say that's wrong prove all things and then hold fast that which is good Amen. you see a lot of people find a fault with one person or or a preacher or a man of god and find one fault and throw everything out you know false preacher false prophet false this Throw everything out. Hold fast that which is good, the Bible says. I hold fast even if, if, if somebody from Jehovah Witnesses tells me something that's good, I hold on to it. I say, praise God, yeah, never saw that before. You know, hold fast that which is good. Prove all things and hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Now, I'll let you work this one out. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's wonderful scriptures. You see, I mean, I, I read you a few scriptures today, quite a lot. And I had my own thoughts with it. But your job is prove all things. Yeah. Is that nonsense what he said? Or is, is, is that uh, not quite right? Or that's not scriptural? Or You have to prove it. Amen. And then hold on to what you think that's right. And seek God and, and go to him Amen. to see if it is so. Amen. And you know, if you can't have this pearl of great price, you don't have to produce it manufacture it or work on it just to receive it but you see in order to receive it you have to lay down your own ideas your own religion your own thoughts otherwise you never can receive it as i said even the disciples they were walking uh, mourning because they thought jesus will take over and overturn the Roman Empire and take control and he'll do this and here they crucify him. Uh, he even told them that he'll be crucified and raised as a third day but he didn't believe it because their eyes were not open to it. They had their own understanding which was controlling them. You see? And we have a lot of our un uh, own understanding. And then some may has been what they heard from the Pharisees and what they heard from this one and that one and uh, they had their own understanding until Jesus opened their understanding 
That's why we say, Lord, open my eyes. I want to see it. I don't want to just be following a religion or something. I want the truth. I want your word speaking to me. You know, when he, when their eyes were open, he told them to go and tarry not many days hence, and you will be in duty with, with, with power for on high the Holy Ghost. They never heard of the Holy Ghost. They didn't even know what it was. But they now believed and did what he said. Oh, well, they, they told us it'll be this way or that way, and no, no, we can't go there, and no, no such thing. I don't know what that means, but I'll do it. <laughs> I go and wait. I don't know what for, but endued with power. I don't know how that works. <laughs> you know, how do you know what the Holy Ghost is if you never received it? You don't know. You, you know, you just, you just think, yeah, yeah, that, that must be it. Yeah, I live a good life now, and I go to church, and I say my prayers, I read the Bible, and I praise God. That's not necessarily the Holy Ghost. Cain did the same thing. He went to church, he built an altar, he praised God. That was not the Holy Ghost. It was just his own doing. Let's press on. Until we see we entered into their power. You know, we're not walking in defeat. We're not walking in misery. We're not walking, you know, we, I'll give you a good example that really, really uh, can get you. When you have children and they don't follow the Lord, it can really, really get you down. And you can cry and Lord and this and, and pray and do all these things and worry and, and everything else. But what about we believe in the promise of God? Oh, it doesn't look like it. I believe in a promise of God. Bring them up in the ways of the Lord, they will not depart from it. Sooner or later, the truth will not depart from them. They may depart from the truth, but sooner or later they come, come into it and say, hey, what's it all about? Why am I listening to this guy and th this guy? person and that woman why can't I listen to my parents for a start you know suddenly it dawns on them you know the parents uh, to tell you something interesting parents have sleepless nights when they have babies remember we hardly slept when we had the first one every time she was coughing oh something's wrong you know check it out and just caring for the child and you care for your children then you feed them, you buy stuff you wouldn't normally buy because it's good for them and do all these things, try to protect them from all evil and all these things. And then somebody comes along and, and says something to them. And, oh, yes, you're right. You know, and they follow a stranger, so to speak. It's very hard wrenching for a, for a parent to see that. Here you... You do everything, say everything, and then they walk away. But God, still God. You see, that's where I have a peace, an absolute peace. You know, God can put people out of your life. He can put people into your life. And there's always reasons for it. There's no complaint. Let's just play our part and trust God. He knows what he's doing. His ways are not our ways. People need to come to an experience where they can appreciate God. You know, if you never, if he, if he the Bible says, he who has sinned much, loves much, you know, when, when he comes into the grace of God. And he who hasn't done a lot of wrong, oh, yeah, I'm saved. Yeah, I know, I, I've been a good child. And, you know, you know, there's reasons. But for us is to believe his word, his promises, and enter into their power and the power is when you can have a peace despite of what's going on around you you can have a peace an absolute peace i just read oh it's pretty sad but i read something in a newspaper over from overseas these people uh went somewhere and the little boy two-year-old walks across the road and got run over by a car and killed 
and then the headline in the paper why did you allow this God why did you take our child away God you know like blaming God uh, there's reasons the believer doesn't do that the believer doesn't do that of course it's it's terrible and it's sad but if you believe it, God knows what he's doing. His ways are not our ways. And sometimes things do happen because we need correction. I always said, uh, not always said, but I, I said that the other day, I don't understand horses, you know, but I, I know uh, they have reins. And, and if you ride a horse, I can't ride horses, I tell you that much. I had one shooting through on me once. But if you ride a horse, you have the reins, and you want to go over uh, straight, and it goes to the side, you have to pull the reins. And the good horse knows what you want, and you don't have to have a tight rein. <laughs> and so is it with the, the believers, you know. If we go a bit out of, of order or uh, to the side, or, or we, we're not displaying the things we ought to, he may pull on one side, we might get correction, and things may happen in our lives, but at the end, we're at the destination he wants us to be. That is what counts, and we're waiting for that. And I believe the coming of the Lord is close at hand, and we are going when we have the Holy Ghost in us, if that power is in us. And let's not miss it for anything. Can we just sing a song and... I just pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time of meditation upon your word. And your word is truth. Your word is life. And I just pray, please quicken it to our hearts. Open our understanding and help us to receive all you have for us. The power of the Holy Ghost in our own lives manifested and on display. And I just pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.